a young man finds himself to be extremely bored, so he peruses internet forums and chat rooms in search of something interesting. He falls into conversation with the person he assumes to be a young lady, who may just be in trouble. But the conversation goes nowhere and he soon forgets about her. Until... A very interesting story this evening from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that you could share your stories directly with me. Well, my dear friends, I think you know what time it is. That's right, it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. This all started one night when I was home alone. I'd been online, looking for something to do. I often find random forums to browse, and see the links of people who have, well, similar interests as me. This led me to one site that I'd never been on before. It was called Bella. When I clicked on it, my computer seemed to glitch for a second. Then it led me to what seemed like some kind of private messaging application. What's your name? It was the first message to appear. I responded with my name, Ethan. Hello, Ethan. I'm Bella. Want to be friends? Oh, is this a bot? LOL. I can be whatever you want me to be. <laughs> no thanks, LOL. I was about to exit the application when another message appeared. Don't go. I'm afraid. I stared at the screen for a second. This was creepy, but not creepy enough for me to take it too seriously. I made the assumption that the uh, bot noticed the delay in my response and therefore asked me not to go. Who said I was leaving? Oh, I just had a feeling. I didn't know computer applications had the ability to feel. They don't. But I am not a computer application. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. What are you? I'm trapped. Uh, well, I'm quite bored. Maybe I'll go. I typed the last statement with a grin. I felt somewhat clever for teasing this bot. Even though well, I knew it was actually impossible to tease it if it were a bot. Please stay. I'm scared. I hate being here alone. Every day, someone visits me. They speak to me. Then, they leave. Please, don't leave. Please. The messages exploded onto the screen, one after the other. I got that creepy feeling again. Maybe I should log off, because this doesn't feel right. Something felt horribly wrong about this whole situation. This didn't seem like a bot. It felt like someone was messing with me. I closed my laptop and decided to call it a night. I got into bed and decided to browse Reddit a bit before I slept. A text message appeared. I asked you not to go. I stared at my phone for a second before texting back. Who is this? No response. I waited a few minutes, then slowly I fell asleep. The next morning I checked my phone, and no new alerts. I was at a constant battle of not checking my phone throughout the day. A few days passed, and I haven't revisited that site. Things start to return to normal. After about a week or two, I've almost come to forget about the whole situation. I lay in bed one night, browsing films on my laptop, when suddenly, I hear a few noises outside. I shrug it off and continue my film. Then I start to hear knocking at my front door. I walk to my living room as quickly and quietly as I can. I stand up against the door and look through the peephole. I see a man, a tall man, wearing a hooded jacket that, for the most part, hides his face. The only feature I can see is his mouth. 
It showed a smile, or dirty teeth. Obviously, I decided not to open the door. I made my way back to my room, contemplating on whether or not I should call the cops. I grabbed my cell phone from my bed and was surprised to see a new text. I asked you not to go. I felt a sharp pain in my back, then my head. After that, darkness. By the time I woke up, I was in the back of a van. My hands tied together behind me and tape around my mouth. It took me a few moments to realize what was happening. I sat in confusion for a while, until my adrenaline kicked in and I began to panic. I squirmed and pulled in every direction my body would allow. I couldn't get loose. I looked around me in the van. It looked like some kind of van the well, FBI officer would use for a surveillance. There were computers and keyboards lined against one side of the van. Some old-fashioned, and some looked to be brand new, but more complex than I'd ever seen before. This made me really begin to worry. The van suddenly stopped, and I was pulled out and thrown to the ground. I looked up to see the smiling man who'd been at my door. He grabbed my legs and started dragging me towards a building I couldn't see very well due to the struggle of me trying to escape his grip. He let go of my legs and showed me a knife. How difficult do you want me to make this? He asked with that same creepy smile. I stopped moving and closed my eyes, hoping to show that, well, I submitted to his threat in fear of being cut or stabbed. He began dragging me across the ground again, and the only thing I could do was cry. I'd never been so scared in my life. I didn't know it was possible to feel this much fear. When he finally got me into the building, I looked around as much as I could to see if I could recognize anything. There were four other guys close to my age, all tied up. Some seemed more injured than others, I began to cry a little bit more. The only thing I could think was that this guy had gotten away with taking at least four other people. There's no way someone would be able to find us. He pulled the tape away from my face. Why are you crying? There's hope for you yet, he said, still smiling that creepy smile. What do you want from me? You'll see. Shut up now and relax. The tape stays off if you can keep quiet. You'll have plenty of time to talk real soon. I closed my eyes and with every fiber of my being, I wished I was at home. I wanted to be in my bed, away from this guy in this building. After what felt like an hour had passed, he lined us up and put us in front of a camera. The other guys were dead silent and didn't put up a fight. Neither did I. I just wanted this to be over. Whatever this sicko wanted to do and record, I just wanted him to do it and get it over with. Maybe then he'd let me go. Now, boys, you are each here because you discovered my sight. I create a new one each time. I'm ready for a new event. <laughs> Or a new show, I should say. And you boys are the stars of the show. <sighs> Fuck off and untie me! I looked over to see one of the guys shouting and struggling. He was a big guy. I hoped he could maybe break free and take out our kidnapper. The smiling man's smile grew bigger. His face looked fully satisfied as he watched this guy struggle. Beep. Beep. The noise came from a computer behind the camera. The smiling man went to the computer and stared at the screen for a moment. <laughs> well, looks like they've chosen their first victim. He spoke loudly to make sure we heard him over the guy still shouting to be let go. The words sent shivers down my spine. I squeezed my eyes shut and tried to hold back another crying fit. The 
the sounds of shouts turned into a gurgle, and then silence for a second. I open my eyes to see the smiling man covered in blood, knife in hand, his smile bigger than ever. He was standing over the lifeless body of the guy who was just struggling seconds before. The guy's throat had been sliced and was still heavily leaking blood. Now, back to what I was saying. You guys are the stars of tonight's event. There are people who are watching you live right now and paying a lot of money to choose who they want to see go next. Out of the four of you, only one will make it out of here alive. And it's all up to my customers here. He spoke in an excited voice, as if he was making some big, happy announcement. I looked to the other three guys to see their reactions. They were silent. One of them had his eyes closed. He was sweaty and seemed almost calm, as if he were meditating or something. Another guy was sobbing and staring at the lifeless body next to him. The other glared at the smiling man. A strong look of hatred that I'd never seen before. Beep. Beep. I kept my eyes open this time. If I was going to die the violent way the first guy did, I didn't want it to come by surprise. The smiling man looked at his computer screen again. He then walked away for a moment, out of sight. When he returned, he was holding an axe. <laughs> I need to keep things interesting for my customers. He struck the crying guy with the axe. Jeez, the noise it made caused me to vomit instantly. I looked over to see the two remaining guys and the smiling man all staring at me. Panic spread over me. I just brought attention to myself. God, I could very well be next. Beep. Beep. The smiling man rushed over to his computer. A few moments later, he walked back over to us. Who's it going to be? It's me, isn't it? The guy who had been glaring at him asked. His voice was angry, but still shaky. I could tell he was trying to mask his fear with anger. The smiling man shook his finger. No. Not you. But if maybe you're a good little boy, you can be next. I braced myself for impact as he raised the axe over his head. The impact never hit me, however. Instead, he killed the guy who had been calm. He lay there once again with his eyes twitching a few times before his death. Choose him next. Let me live. Choose him. I looked over to see the only guy left, shouting toward the computer screen. I felt my mouth open in surprise, but I couldn't quite say anything. I was shocked and terrified. Beep. Beep. Damn it. I had no time to defend myself before they chose who would be next to die. I stared at the smiling man. He looked to his computer, then back to us. He put his axe down and walked out of sight once more. When he returned, he was holding a shotgun. He walked over to the only other guy and placed it against his head. I closed my eyes and turned away. The sound of the gun made my ears ring. I refused to open my eyes. I didn't want to see the other guys next to me any more. I definitely didn't want to see the smiling man either. <laughs> You're today's lucky winner. Congratulations. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll find you. And we can play again with the other lucky winners before you. Are you going to let me go? I asked, my eyes still shut. Nope, but I'm leaving you here. That's fair, right? Gives you a fighting chance, he said with his creepy laugh. Oh, he's leaving me here. 
I made it. If I can just get loose, and when this guy's gone, I'll be okay. I am okay. Now, don't you go and tell anyone about this, because I'm watching you. I'm always watching you. The last winner who wanted to blab to the police regretted it. He saw his mother, wife, and kids play this game. Except there was no winner. Only him to survive alone. Do you understand me? Yes. I'll be quiet. Please, just go. He laughed and began packing up his things. A few moments later, he was gone. I struggled to get loose, but I had no luck. I tried everything I could. I even shouted for what felt like hours, just screaming for help. A police officer found us the next day. I was sent to the hospital, and the others were sent to the morgue. When questioned by the police, I told them that I had no memory whatsoever of the events of that night. One moment I was in bed, the next I was awoken to the police officer who found us. Part of me wanted to tell the truth, but a bigger part of me was afraid of ever having to see that smile again. Over the next few years, I did my research. I found out what the dark web is. It's basically a gate into the internet that lets you browse a lot of illegal things that other browsers don't give access to. I assumed this is where those customers had found the smiling man's live stream. He had been tracking us through the Bella site, chatting with us long enough to hack into our systems and steal whatever information he needed to track us down and take us. I never actually accessed the dark web. I was too afraid. I had learned my lesson with sites that I was unfamiliar with. I honestly can't even be on a computer for too long without having a panic attack. I live in fear of... Well, whatever I do, it can lead this man to tracking me again. All I can really do is hope that he doesn't go through with his word of making me join another of his sick games. I hope, with all my heart, that I've seen the last of the smiling man. Well, what did you think of that one? Pretty standard deep web story, I thought, but you know, quite interesting in and of itself. So let me know in the comment section below the video, and hopefully this time I will have plenty of time to reply to all of those lovely comments that you leave. Well, it's the midweek. We got through hump day, and we're heading towards Friday, when, of course, I will have yet another story for you. So I hope you're going to join me again real soon, but for this evening, I wish you all very, very sweet dreams, and I'll be back again with more stories for you very soon. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay?